Back in the middle 1930s, the Holy Spirit began to work in a remarkable way in the north coast of Honduras. And more or less, it has said that work has continued on to this day. At that time, many notable characters got saved. And we'll tell you about some of those. Now we were living, my wife and I and Trujillo, at that time. We were all alone in the work. Brother Hawkins and his good wife had gone to England for a little rest. So it was necessary to make many trips from Trujillo to San Pedro Zula and back again. Now on one of these trips, when I arrived in La Saiba, Brother Salaya wanted to know if I could wait over the next day to visit a dear lady that was in trouble. And she was very anxious for us to go and have a conversation with her. Well, I thought of Philip and I thought of myself. And although I was on my way home, and when you're going home, you know, you're going home. But I thought, like Philip, I'd better stay. So stay I did. Now, this dear lady, Dania Mariana, he gave me a little outline of who she was. She lived in a village not so very far from La Saiba. She seemed to be a rather brilliant kind of lady, very remarkable in many ways. A very good woman as far as goodness goes in this world. She took quite an interest in other people, especially newborn babies. She tried to keep track of all the babies when they were born, where they were born, and who were their parents. So that when the priest would come, she could guide him to these homes so that these children could be baptized, securing their entrance into heaven. Well, on this occasion, when she had quite a list, she sent for the priest who lived quite the distance away. He sent back a message that he could not come. Why could he not come? Because the last time that he was there, he did not have enough of money for him. So therefore, he couldn't see his way to come back. That prayed upon this dear lady's mind, what is this? Why does God, he began to believe in God, why does God make such laws as this? Before these children are one year of age, 50% will have died, what about them then? And there that preyed upon that dear woman's mind. 
She did not know what to do. She began to doubt God. No, there is no God. If there was a God, he'd be a God of love. He would be considerate. He would know that these poor people do not have one dollar and fifty cents to pay for the baptism of each child. No, he can't be God. There is no God. That was the conclusion Danya Mariana came to. She figured if there was a God, he would be a God of love. He would be considerate. He would know. And he would not oppress the poor people. She almost became an infidel. In fact, that's one way that infidels are made. So she went on passing the days, trying to forget all about the poor children, trying to forget all about God, saying it was all a mess up that she could not understand. She went on like this for days until one afternoon she sat in the front door of her little shack. She saw the sun sh sh setting in the west. Where is the sun going to? Where does it go after it leaves here? It's going to God. No. There's no such thing. There is no God. No. That can't be so. That's how she figured it out. Then she began to think of something that she had heard. She had heard there were a certain class of people called evangelistas, gospelers. She had been told that they were a good people. She had heard that they were very considerate in all things. She had heard many good reports about them. But on the other hand, she had been advised by her church to be very careful with those kind of people. They were only deceivers. You couldn't believe them. They were spreading false teachings. And she was advised to keep away from them above all other people. But then, on the other hand, she began to think more seriously. Perhaps it could be that they have something and know something that we do not know. So she began to inquire about these people. There was no one in her village. But she heard there were some living in La Saiva. So after getting permission from her husband, which is a very necessary thing down there, off she went to La Saiva. She did not know where to go. But she began to inquire. She walked from house to house, she knocked on the door. Pardon me, could you tell me where the evangelistas are? No, they couldn't tell her. She walked about all afternoon. She could not find anyone to give her information 
about them. She got up early in the morning. She started off again, inquiring from door to door. Now there was a seeking sinner. There was something, someone who was ready. And that's the first thing that the sinner needs. He needs to be ready. She was ready. Seeking the Savior. Oh, that she could only find. At last she was told, yes. There is a man. He is an evangelista. He's a very good man. But he lives away in the other part of the city. She inquired where. She was given direction. Off she went. On foot, of course. There was no other way to go. Eventually, she got to Celia's home. She inquired, Is there an evangelista here? Yes, by the grace of God there is. Celia answered her, Come on right in. Have a seat. I am very anxious to have a talk with you dear people. I have heard a lot about you, but I'm afraid I don't have time now because the train leaves and I must get home. I have only permission for this evening no more. Very good, Celia told her. Never mind. Give me your direction and I will go out and visit you. Thus it was, instead of continuing my journey home to Trujillo, I went along with Brother Celia to visit this dear woman. She had evidently been thinking seriously about eternal things and her own condition. Celia had time just to tell her not to trouble about the children. God had taken care of them. It was older people after they reached the age of responsibility that were in danger and advised her to think of her own condition. Evidently she had been doing this as she had some important questions to ask. And it was quite a joy to sit down with her and explain many things from the scriptures. You remember she had come to the conclusion there was no God because if there was a God, he would be a God of love. But according to her experience, there was not much love demonstrated in sending little children to perdition because their parents didn't have enough of money to have them baptized. However, Brother Celia put her straight on that matter. And the first thing that she ought to do was to see to her own condition. <coughs> then after that, she may be able to see to the condition of others. So, of course, we brought John 3 and 16 before her. There we pointed out that God was a God of love indeed. He loved the poor sinner so much that he sent his only son. And down the Lord Jesus Christ came, born into this world, 
by the Virgin Mary and the Holy Ghost. He did not enter earth as any other man did. He grew up and eventually when the time came he carried out the work that God had sent him for. He went to the cross and there on the cross he received the punishment for sin. The punishment that the sinner should be receiving throughout eternity. And Brother Salaya was very straight and frank and plain in telling her that these idols which she had been worshipping made of some of wood, some of stone, and some of other precious metals. They were only works of man's hands, and they could never save anyone. But the Lord Jesus Christ went to the cross, and there he received the punishment that the sinner deserved. All that remained to be done was to put her faith, her trust, her confidence in the Lord Jesus Christ as her Savior. I left much of the talking to him as he was well conversed in all of those things and he brought out very plain to that dear lady what was needed for her soul salvation. The work had been done. All she had to do was put her trust in it. It wasn't a question of doing. It wasn't a question of buying. It wasn't a question of money. He told her there were no lampiras in heaven. No dollars in heaven. That was an earthly thing. And when it came to that, that was man's doings, not God's. So after some time of explaining, her face seemed to light up. You don't mean to tell me, you don't mean that I have nothing to do, she said. No, absolutely nothing. Well, I've been doing all my life. Yes, Elias said, and so, so had I. Until that night, I put my trust in the Lord Jesus Christ as my Savior. And slowly, the light seemed to dawn. And before he knew it, she was preaching to us, telling us how God could save a sinner. At last I said, tell me, if you were to die tonight, where would you go? I would go to heaven, she said. You would go to heaven? Aren't you a sinner? Haven't you sinned against God? Yes, I deserve to die. I deserve to be punished. But the Lord Jesus Christ received the punishment for me. And we all got down and we thanked the Lord for saving our soul. Thus it was that Daniel Mariano, being deceived, for so many years came to the point of simplicity and received Christ as her Savior. <laughs>